Welcome everybody to a new review. I'm going to be taking a look at a Hong Kong horror film from 2005 called Keeper of Darkness. In case you don't know what the film is about, um, it's about a streetwise exorcist who becomes an overnight sensation when his extraordinary exorcisms are recorded and go viral on the internet. However, this attracts not only the attention of the media, but also creatures from the underworld. What's unique about this film is you can actually watch it a few different ways, but I'm just going to be talking about the movie in general. The opening of the film is reminiscent of the intros to ghost stories and perfectly sets up the creepy tone. The intro was actually various scenes showing a lonely, a lonely boy playing with cars and stuff like that. Wasn't really being supervised by his mom. And that intro showcases, showcases and foreshadows how lonely Fat is later on in life. He doesn't really have any friends and then he eventually realizes that his one true friend is actually the ghost he's known since he moved into that apartment. Just the way that it was edited, um, it looks really, really good. The film on a whole was inspired by these YouTube exorcism videos that the director, Nick Chung, he also starred in it as the main character, Fat. Basically, he he's calling attention to how fake some of them feel and it shows, it shows a little bit of that process within the movie. And then we get the first flashback of the film when Fat is leaving this apartment and he encounters the tall ghost. The uh, tracking shots are, are beautifully executed and they flow well from one scene to the next. The CG, it's not perfect and it looks bad, but it, it kind of... I'd say it kind of works well within the shots. The The cinematography overall is really good, it's great. The editing is perfect in its ability to convey, convey the story properly. Like blending all these different elements and shots, it doesn't feel like it's over edited or under edited, which is really good. The framing of a lot of the scenes was really well done and I, I really like that about it. There's cutaways from like whenever Fat touches somebody who's possessed, he kind of gets the story in his mind and we see how that person or how the ghost actually died. It's really well done. It's well, well edited into the overall story. It's well placed throughout the story. Another cool thing that happens in it is they also mix, there's one shot where Fat is, he, he sees a vision of somebody dying, uh, I think a car crash or something, somebody's hit by a car. And then the next scene, it shows him finding like a tape of what happened and it just verifies the vision and the vision that Fat has and adds a bit more backstory to it. I found that the the mix of the technology and the ghostly visions was uh, brilliantly executed. Uh, it's not something you normally see. Uh, usually movies just focus on one or the other. The dialogue and story is well written and it shows that the story has heart Fat is shown as somebody who really cares about the people and ghost, ghosts around him. 
even if we don't see it as often in the movie, you can just tell that he really does care about those around him, so. There's not many scares, but they're, the few scares that there are, they're well placed throughout the film, and they almost take a backseat to the story, so that the dramatic and emotional elements of the story can shine through this horror story. It's a horror movie, but then it also has this emotional side to it, which you don't see in many horror films at all. The transitions of some scenes are very believable when it go when it transitions between a between between the past and present. So there's a in Fat's apartment. There's a pan down or. Yeah, I believe it's actually called a tilt. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so it's a tilt uh, facing the building across from his building. And it just tilts down and then shows the street. And it blends so well with the flashback that you can't tell which shot was uh, part of the flashback and which part was part of the present. The match cut was really well done and well thought out. Uh, the first flashback shows the trauma that Fat endured as a child. So the trauma, I'm not actually going to talk about it in this, but it is, it, it's a little extreme uh, to say the least. And in the future discussion video, we will be talking about it and it will likely trigger some people, but we just want to talk about it um, and how it informs the story in the right way uh, and how it affects the main character, Fat. So after the flashback, we start seeing the true story in the movie. It begins to show itself after that first uh, flashback and it focuses on the relationship between Fat and Cher. Uh, Cher is the ghost that he's living with. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about her later on. So one of the scares I guess you could say is this murder scene in a bathhouse with a bunch of these um, mobster type characters I would say uh, well maybe not mobst mobster it's uh, a medium and his like bodyguards and stuff like that it's a way for the tall ghost to to get Fat's attention uh, the tall ghost basically is on a killing spree of all these mediums just to get Fat's attention or something along those lines. There's a scene where it's another triggering scene for some people and Cher happens to be crying and then the camera actually follows her tear as it runs down her arm and it basically traces her vein, I guess you could say, best way to describe it, and it, trend, it goes to a transitions to show a blood drop with, a, with her in a bathtub with a razor on the side of it, and it, just the way that they did the match cut, the transition, it was really well done. There, there is some comedy in the film. And it's all from like one character. Uh, Fat has an assistant named Chung. Uh, he provides like 99% of all the comedic uh, relief in the film uh, to lighten it up a little bit. Fat has to go into purgatory at one point, I guess you could call it, to save 
share, I think. Uh, he, he goes there, but he has to basically put a bag over his head, kill himself, just to get to this place to save Cher. I should mention that Thad is being monitored uh, by this news reporter who he becomes friends with. Uh, in this purgatory, you could say, uh, there's something really interesting that happens and uh, it's not really explained. It You kind of have to figure it out yourself, but Fat is actually seen as a ghost while Cher is seen more human. Uh, that could probably mean that because Cher is the ghost in the real world, uh, that it could mean that Fat doesn't belong in Purgatory, so that's why he seems more like a ghost, and vice versa with uh, Cher in the real world. Not entirely sure if that's the meaning behind that, but it, it was definitely very interesting. There's a flashback in Purgatory, and it shows a different side to the story, and it shows the traumatic incident that leads to Fat's mom jumping out a window. Uh, this alternate story, it's revealed that maybe Fat was actually supposed to die with his mom. After uh, Fat save Cher, or no, I th he might be hunting the the tall ghost. He brings the tall ghost out, and I guess you could say an emotional scene. He finds out that he's been wrong all along, and he's been trying to get revenge when he should have been looking for his wife, something like that. After he died. He should have been looking for his wife as opposed to trying to exact revenge to save her. The tall ghost demon then gets eaten by his wife's ghost, which is interesting. Uh, and that's how the ghosts actually, some of them actually die in the film is because they get eaten by other ghosts. Yeah, it, it's an odd movie. And then that's basically the end of the, the horror side of the story. And then it goes on for another half hour to give the emotional side of the story its proper end. And during this time, Fat realizes that Cher is truly his best friend and the one he loves most as he reminisces more funny and heartwarming moments with her while watching a sunset with Ling, who is that reporter that I mentioned before. She helped share in various ways throughout the film and stuff like that. I didn't write much down for her character. Uh, because the story mainly focuses on the relationship between Fat and Cher. It does have some sort of like end of credit scene, but it's before the credits and it hints at a possible sequel uh, in an interesting way. It's not entirely clear if that is actually with Cher or he's with Ling. Uh, it doesn't really give a proper end to Fat's story with Ling. And if there's a sequel, that's it's probably gonna be explained in that. In in the film, which ties it to the fact that you can watch it two different ways, the tall ghost slash demon mentions like just randomly in the movie that Fat's actually dead 
and it kind of hints at the fact that the movie is in Fat's own purgatory, you could say. And it just makes you, like, if you view it like that, it makes you view it, like, an interesting way and from a different angle, and it creates the, like, I, I guess a different um, tone to the film, I guess you could say. But not many movies are, not many movies you can actually view from two different angles and stuff like that. I haven't actually had a chance to watch it uh, from the point of view that Fat is actually dead, but maybe at some point. So you could essentially see it uh, the film overall as two films in one. You could see it as like a straightforward horror film and you could also see it as more of a drama and but if you take out either element the story doesn't really I don't think the story would fit as well because you kind of need that balanced I do think that the film is well balanced between the two stories which is what makes it unique and good in my opinion it's kind of a tough movie to find because it's I don't think it's on any um, normal streaming service yeah it, it's not even on YouTube so you'd have to find a DVD copy much like the copy that I got here yeah you, you can't order it on Amazon. Uh, the two sites that you can likely order it on is one called Bayoyo and this other one called Yes Asia. And same thing. They're, they're both legitimate sites. I do highly recommend the film if you end up finding a copy of it somewhere. Really good. I hope it does get a sequel at some point. Uh, if I were to give it a rating, I'd probably give it a 9.5 because of how in-depth uh, and how much lore is actually in the film, which is not something you normally find in North American films. And that also explains why this and the next film is, next film review is going to be longer than usual uh, because there's so much stuff to actually cover hope you enjoyed this review for keeper of darkness oh i should mention one final thing the music video it actually takes some of the scenes from the movie and like shows it in a different light like that purgatory scene uh is like when that is running through the field to catch Cher. Uh, it's different. And I think the way that these two, like the movie and then the music video, uh, it, it does something that you don't normally see, which is cool. So, but the music video does spoil the film. So, well, I guess you could say that the movie's already been spoiled if you've made it this far. So, if you've made it this far, check out the music video. Um, so, see you in the next one.